Hello again. Um, there have been a few people saying that their, uh, your motor has been um, appearing as though both halves are fairly loose and move a lot. So that top section seems to move a lot when they force the gimbal around. Um, what can happen during transport is that that whole motor gets bumped around quite a bit and you can end up with the two grub screws that are here and here get a little bit loose. Um, they're pressed up against this uh, aluminium uh, centre shaft. If they get loose then obviously that um, grabbing point on the top bell around the top of that um, shaft will come, become a little bit loose and gradually get worse and worse. Um, the best way to approach it is to really, first of all, take those screws completely out. Now, find yourself a, an Allen key that will fit the head of those two grub screws. Make sure it's spot on the right size because if it's slightly undersized you can strip that uh, hexagonal hole which will make it practically impossible to get them out. So make sure you've got an Allen key that fits it really snug. Also be aware there's very strong magnets in the head of the, uh, the motor. Um, if while I'm pulling it out, I let that grub screw fall off, it's going to go snap straight onto one of those, um, uh, one of the magnets and it's really difficult to get out. So just gingerly take it out like that and put it to one side and do not lose them. Fortunately I've got a nice collection of them that I can replace if I do lose one. However, you may not have that. They look like they're probably M2 or 2.5, probably M2 grub screws. So I'm going to undo the second one. So just keep in mind that the 528H has got two. The next thing I'm going to do, and you probably need to use some tools to, um, to get the, the center shaft out, is to try and push it out. Now, doing that with your fingers is practically impossible. Um, what I tend to do is get like a, a piece of round metal that, or, or even the back of a, uh, a screwdriver just to tap that initial uh, grab there downwards. As soon as that gets pushed down, the center shaft will slide out the bottom of that, um, that bearing there. So that's what I'll do next. Okay, I've managed to find a tool that is just the right diameter to um, make contact with the top of the shaft, but also not be too wide to damage the uh, inside of the um, the bell, the hole of the bell at the top there. So as I tap it down it won't start scratching the inside or get jammed in there. Um, make sure your little grub screws are out of the way because you've got to tap things reasonably hard to get it out. Um, but yeah, making sure that the collar's got somewhere to go. Make sure you're dead centre on there. I would say that iPower has probably improved the uh, the quality of their motors um, since the first batch that I got because that collar was nice and tight even without the grub screws in. Um, possibly they had some sort of Q and A issue. Um, Q and A, what's the word? Quality assurance issue, uh, where the diameter of that hole was just that little bit too wide, having too much give in the collar. Um, now that the shaft is slid through, you can actually pull it right out of that bottom bearing there. Um, the only thing that's holding that, the top of the motor onto the bottom of the motor is the magnets. Now keep in mind, those magnets are really strong. Um, they're about two or three mil thick. Um, to pull the two halves apart, you really have to use a lot of force. And do not get your fingers caught in between the two halves. Like if you have your finger there and go, oh, it really hurts. As you can see there, the magnets are very, very thick. So rare earth magnets of that size are actually very strong. So this is in fact a very strong motor. It's just that its diameter could be a little bit wider to give me more torque. Okay, so that's the stator end of the motor. You've got um, a bearing there and a bearing there. 
while it's apart like that, it probably doesn't hurt to put a bit of um, uh, oil on those bearings. Because uh, straight out of the factory, whatever oil was in there is probably dried up or gone hard. Um, I, I tend to use this stuff here, the lithium grease, because it, it's fantastic on the CNC router moving parts. Um, it's a little mucky being a, a grease. Um, it's not as good as working with, I guess, uh, a light oil. Um, but it does the job quite well and it penetrates into the bearing um, quite well. You just need to be careful mopping up any excess. Now, the shaft itself, if you spin it around and have a look at the top of it, there is in fact, I don't know whether you can see it in the light there, there is in fact a flat um, part of the top there where the grub screw is supposed to make contact with. Now, the silly Charlies who put these things together in China have not made any conscientious effort to make sure that, that um, flat area is in direct contact with the grub screw. They might have it slightly off like that and then one grub screw there and one grub screw there. One of the grub screws has to be up against that flat area. Reason being is if the grub screw gets slightly loose, it's actually got nowhere to go. If that collar starts sliding up, it actually collects the very edge of the top of the shaft right there and that shaft can't slide out any further unless that grub screw comes right out which it shouldn't if you use Loctite um, so that's what we need to ensure is that the shaft is actually inserted back in with it lining up in that flat area there so to do that let's grab a pencil um, and mark right on the center of that flat area, flat area at the top of the hollow shaft itself right there so you've got a marker to see where you need to line it up so what I'll do is I'll put those two halves together again now they're going to grab with great force and go snap so I'm going to be really careful not to catch my fingers when I do this there we go now it doesn't have to line up perfectly at this point just close so then we get a collar, making sure that you've still got your little pencil mark exactly where you need that to line up and you start sliding that back up through the two bearings there and eventually it'll reach the, uh, the bell part of the motor there. So we need to start moving the bell around so that at least one of those grub screw holes lines up with the pencil mark. So we've got to find our pencil mark, it's in there somewhere, here it is. I'll we'll slide it around so the first grub screw lines up with it. That's where things get a bit tricky because the magnets will want to snap to one side. So now we start tapping this down and this should line up the bell as it starts to push into it. Make a note that I'm using a fairly soft surface there because I don't want to bash metal against metal. And as I do that, it lines itself up with the hole in the top of the bell. So my pencil mark is now lined up with that grub screw there. And the other one will be hard against the side of there. Now the reason I use two grub screws is when you start to compress that screw into the side of the collar, the collar will want to kind of expand outwards that way. This other one at 45, at 90 degrees to the out, to the first grub screw will push it back in again. Okay, so we'll keep tapping that down until um, the ridge, uh, the flange on the bottom of that collar, is almost touching the um, uh, the bottom bearing. That's when you've got to stop. If you keep going, you can damage that bottom bearing. Stop and have a quick look. I've got another maybe half a mil there. What have we got there. That's pretty good. All right. Now, if you've got a big gap there and it hasn't pushed itself all the way through there, that's fine. Just do the same again. Big, hard, soft surface on there. Make sure that that's not so small that it slides into the hole there it's got to touch the outside rim of the hole 
and start tapping that down. And eventually the top of the bell will be almost touching the top bearing inside the motor. So we check our gaps there, make sure nothing's binding, make sure the gap is even all the way around. We've got probably still a little bit of give there, so I might tap it down a little bit more. Just a fraction more. Just a bit over. Do the same from the top. So you should end up with the top of that um, tube lining up with the top of the uh, the surface of the top of the motor there. Almost exactly the same. Make sure there's no binding, it's all good. Nothing pressing up hard at the bottom there of the bearing. Everything's lining up nicely. My pencil mark lines up with the grub screw. So now I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite thread locking compound on that grub screw and then I'll put it in and tighten it up make sure it's reasonably tight or else the locking compound won't do its little magic always wipe up spillages because this stuff is terrible on enamel. And put the second grub screw in around here. Tighten that up. another spin make sure it's all even all the way around it is there's no binding there's top and half are not touching each other so now that motor is good to go and you'd be hard pressed to try and bend it that's pretty tough So that's a good motor. And it doesn't hurt to check it every now and then, pull it apart, have a look and make sure that that shaft hasn't slid down at all. Do regular grazing of the, um, the bearings there and that motor should be good to go for a good length of time.